All right, well, good morning. Again, glad to see each and every one of you here today as we've started Drive-In Church at Indian River Baptist Church. I am so excited about this opportunity. And uh, for those that are joining us in Facebook Live, well, I hope this will work out. Uh, we'll see if it does, but just know that everyone that's here, they're staying in their cars, the windows are open, and they've tuned to 88.7, and so they can hear, and I've, they've already honked their horns a couple times today, so we're, we're going to save that. I'll, I'll tell you what, let's save that for next Sunday, when it, Easter Sunday, we can honk the horns in, okay? We'll, we'll do it at that time, but, uh, but again, it's good to see each and every one of you. Can't hug you, can't touch you, whatever, like we normally would do as far as shaking hands and hugging one another. And I've missed that. I don't know about you, but I, I really miss that a lot. But it's, again, it's good to do, at least gather as the body of Christ to have a visible testimony in our community that the church is still alive. The church is still active, even in a difficult time like this. And so as we begin our service together, inside they're going to be playing a, a call to worship. And so Karen and uh, Pat and Kathy are here today and they're going to be leading us in, in music at this time. And so this will be our call to worship. And unfortunately, you folks, Facebook Live, you won't be able to hear that. Uh, but hey, it's going to be a wonderful time as we begin our worship together. So let's, uh, let's gather and worship and I'll turn it inside and let them begin uh, lead us in worship and music at this time. Okay. Y'all are listening to music. I'm up here. I don't have a radio, so I couldn't I was trying to tell when they were done. So later, someone on the front row point at me next time and say, hey, they finished singing. Okay. We're just going to go to the Lord in prayer at this time and recognize that, you know, it is a difficult circumstance in our nation that's bringing us to a, having to meet to worship like this. And you guys know all the details. But I want you to know that we can be encouraged that even when all of this is going on, there's still signs of, of hope, signs of encouragement. And I'm going to point out one sitting on the, the back row over here is Brother Mike Sullivan, who's been in the hospital for a long time, just recently came home. He wanted to be at worship today. So I'm going to give a shout out, wave to Mike over there and Sue as well. I tell you, so good to see both of you here today. And many of you have had your own trials and struggles and tribulations over the last few weeks as well. And so we're grateful for what God is doing. And we're going to ask the Lord to, to intervene in our nation at this time intervene because you know they're saying this is going to be a bad week that there's going to be more deaths and uh and that's just a horrible thing to hear and to contemplate but we also want to remember that god is still on his throne and we can trust him and we can move forward in his strength and in his comfort so i'm just going to have a, a open and a word of prayer here they're going to sing for us again on the inside and again if someone i'm looking at you right there if you'll just wave at me when they're done singing that that would be great but let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you, Lord, and we praise you for your grace and your goodness. Lord, your mercy that is so abundant to us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, today is Palm Sunday. It's a day that reminds us of the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. The crowds were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. Oh, it was a wonderful time. But Lord, we know the story that within a week's time, they had turned those shouts of triumph to shouts of crucify, crucify. And Lord, as we've been looking in your word, we see that even in the midst of that trial, that horrible thing that took place, the crucifixion, Lord, you bring a great good. In fact, the greatest good the world has ever seen. And that's what we're here to proclaim today. And Lord, we give you the praise for how you're working in people's lives right now. Thank you for the healing that you bring, Father. Thank you for the comfort that you bring in times of grief and sorrow. And Lord, we pray for those on the front line in this uh, COVID-19 response here in our commonwealth and around the nation and around the world. We pray you give the doctors and nurses the stamina, the strength, the wisdom they need, Lord, to answer this uh, pandemic. And I pray, Father, you grant them success to save lives. And Lord, give the scientists and uh, epidemiologists and whoever that's developing a vaccine and cure, Lord, that that would have a break. As you've tuned into this, you're probably wondering what happened. You were watching a drive-in service for Palm Sunday and, and all of a sudden it just stopped. And that's been my experience, unfortunately, with the Facebook Live. I'm grateful when it works and when it doesn't, it's very difficult. We had a wonderful service yesterday, had a wonderful turnout. 
uh, people seemed to enjoy it, even though I couldn't uh, see them in person per se, but I could see them through the windshield. But we did have a wonderful time of worship together, and I did share from God's Word. Uh, the video cut off from that right in the middle of my prayer. I'm very grateful for those who are inside uh, leading in worship and the music and all. Uh, we're working on that. We had said that Palm Sunday was our experiment, and yeah, we found some things we need to fix. But again, I thank you for sticking with this video to, to this point. And I just wanted to just share real briefly, I'm not gonna do the whole sermon that I did uh, yesterday, but it's just a reminder of the very essence of the gospel. Uh, we've been going through the book of Matthew and uh, last week we saw how Jesus was crucified and that he was really dead and that Jesus died for our sins. And today we're gonna see, uh, as we look in this passage of scripture, that Jesus was buried and you know, that's really the essence of the gospel. When you get right down to it, is that Jesus died on the cross, was buried, and on the third day rose again. Everything else flows from that. And so we're just going to look at this passage of scripture today, just briefly, just to see some points from there that will help and encourage us. So if you want to go ahead and turn to Matthew chapter 27, uh, verse 57. And while you're turning there, I just want to remind you that, you know, this time of COVID-19, uh, that people are grieving. People are grieving in many ways. One, obviously some people have lost loved ones. And from what we were hearing, this is going to be a week where there's uh, unfortunately going to be reported a lot of deaths. And that is horrible to hear. There's families that are going to be grieving. And we know that there's grieving that's going to be different. One, family members can't be with their loved ones as they go through this. And, and then to have the funeral, you just can't have the normal type funeral that you would normally have. Uh, where friends and family from all over come in. That's just not being able to take place uh, at a time like that. So people grieve. They're having to grieve in different ways, but people are grieving in a lot of ways. Maybe someone has lost a job. Maybe you have lost a job. And so you're, you're grieving that loss and you're trying to figure out what to do. Maybe you're a high school senior or a college senior. And think about these people. They spent their uh, academic career looking for that big day to celebrate and just enjoy and and they're grieving because grieving is when you have a loss something is lost and we grieve that which is lost and so uh, that opportunity that time is gone also there are people who are grieving just because again they can't see their loved ones as they would normally see them can't spend that time with them I and mean, that's one of the reasons we're having to do church in a different format a different way but I want us to see from this passage of scripture, hopefully today, something that teaches us uh, something about grief and help us what process that grief. So if you found your place in scripture there, let's look at Matthew uh, 27, verse 57. And it says, now when evening had come, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who himself had also become a disciple of Jesus. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be given to him. When Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and he laid it in his new tomb, which he had hewn out of the rock. And he rolled a large stone against the door of the tomb and departed. And Mary Magdalene was there, and the other Mary sitting opposite the tomb. May God bless the reading of his word. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray for those who are joining uh, and watching this video that Lord, you would strengthen us to understand your word. And that Lord, that your son died on the cross and was buried. And because he was buried, Lord, that means there was that hope of victory as he came out of the grave as well. Father, teach us how to process grief. Teach us how to process what's going on around us in these moments. I just pray this in Jesus name, amen. Well, again, I'm just gonna do very briefly what I did yesterday, but just Number one, I want us to see that when Jesus was buried, he was buried in a borrowed tomb, a borrowed tomb. Notice uh, that Joseph of Arimathea, one who was part of that council, uh, one who was in a sense, a very quiet disciple, someone who had seen Jesus, heard Jesus, but yet had not made any kind of public profession of faith. He takes courage and he goes and he asks for the body of Jesus. And he lays Jesus in his own tomb, a tomb that was made for Joseph and his family, and Jesus is laid in there. The only one to have been laid in that tomb to that point. And that was the custom of that time. Just the point I want to point out is they did the ordinary type burial. 
but it was really significant that he did this because most criminals who were hung on a cross were buried in a common grave. Unfortunately, we're kind of seeing some of that around the world right now with this COVID-19, just unceremonious type burials and uh, things that are taking place. But in that period, that quickness of that time, uh, Joseph went and asked for the body, was able to get the body, take the body and lay it in this brand new tomb and wrapped it in the linen cloths. And uh, we find out that he provided some spices. Actually, Nicodemus comes and helps him uh, with that as well. The ordinary burial customs of the time. But it made sure that Jesus' body just wasn't thrown in some mass grave. It made sure, in fact, that it fulfilled scripture, Isaiah 53, 9, if you want to go look that up. But Jesus was buried in a borrowed tomb. And the second thing I want us to see is that he was buried in what I would call a recognizable tomb or identifiable tomb. Notice who else was there. Not only was Joseph there, but in verse 61, it says, And Mary Magdalene was there, and the other Mary sitting opposite the tomb. These women were eyewitnesses to his death. They were eyewitnesses to his burial. And guess who's the first witnesses to his resurrection? Yeah, these women. And that's because they knew which tomb to go to. They followed the body of Jesus and they went to make sure they could go and see where he was laid. It was helping them to what? Process their grief. And we do that in our day and time. We have cemeteries that we can go to and places where we have said goodbye to loved ones. We can go to those places. And so it was identifiable. I think it's important to recognize this because there are people who want to say, well, on that third day, the women went to see the tomb, but they were confused and went to the wrong one. It was empty and they started this rumor. <laughs> no, they, they knew where it was. But my point is there was a place for them to go and process their grief. You know, this past week we were watching something online. It was actually my daughter's uh, college. There's a ministry that they have. They were doing something on uh, YouTube live and I watched the speaker and he said something that I thought was kind of interesting. He said that his favorite place book or the pages in the Bible were actually the maps. I kind of think the maps, what are you talking about? But you think about that. The fact that there are maps in our Bible point to the fact that the events that have taken place took place in actual history. There's a place you could go to and see, like these women could go and see a tomb as the stone is rolled in front of it. And that stone was rolled there to seal it, to keep out animals, to keep out grave robbers and those kinds of things. But they go and it's a place where they can go and grieve. And it's interesting that cemeteries today have maps, right? They have a map that would, if it's a large cemetery, which would point out where this is and that, that area, those kinds of things. My point is this took place in a physical place. These stories that we follow aren't just made up myths. They actually occurred. You could place them on a map and that tomb where Jesus was buried had coordinates. You know, if we knew exactly where that was, we could put GPS coordinates in and say, yep, this is where his body lay. And this is where he rose from the dead. And so he was buried in a borrowed tomb, but also in a recognizable or I'd say identifiable tomb. And I think it was interesting to have that place where they could go and to, to grieve. I think that's what's hard about what we're experiencing right now. It's difficult to come and worship. Not that we come to church to grieve, but it, hey, we come to church and it helps us process whatever it is we're going through. Help us to see things from the way God sees them. And I think it's important that we gather together as believers. So I want to invite you to come this coming Sunday for Easter Sunday. We're doing drive-in church again. Palm Sunday was our experiment. But this Sunday, we're going to be having a drive-in church again at 1030. And it's a way to come together and to, to worship. And finally, I want us to see that Jesus was buried in a guarded tomb. Now, I didn't read that part earlier, but let's go ahead and read that. It says, on the next day which followed the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered together to Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember while he was still alive how that deceiver said, After three days I will rise. Therefore command that the tomb be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away, and say to the people he has risen from the dead. So the last deception will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard. Go your way. Make it as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure 
sealing the stone and setting the guard. I think it's interesting that these Jewish leaders who would not go see Pilate on that day of the Passover, they wouldn't go in because they didn't want to be defiled, right? So they couldn't celebrate the feast of the Passover. Here they are on a Sabbath going in to see Pilate. Here they are doing secretly, you know, violating the Sabbath according to their own traditions and the Jewish law. That's how much they hated Jesus. And it's interesting, they were the ones thinking of the third day that he may rise again, right? Not that they believed that, but that that was something he taught and they understood that. And so they said, hey, let's make sure they don't start some rumor. The disciples come, steal the body. We need a guard. So they got Pilate to issue a guard. It would have been 16 men, well-trained soldiers, guys who knew what they were doing, not something that a group of fishermen could uh, overpower by any means. And these guys were to guard the tomb. It says it was sealed. And that seal in that day and time, you know, with that stone rolled in front of it, they would have taken a, a big rope or string type thing and placed it uh, with wax on one side of that tomb, wax and clay mixed together and brought it around, made the seal on the other side so that it would be easily spotted if that stone had been rolled. And that seal was a sign to say, stay out, stay away. This is imperial uh, grounds, so to speak, punishable by death. And notice this, that these guards, if they were negligent in their duty, you know what their sentence was? They, they would be executed if they didn't fulfill their job. And I think it's interesting that these guys being put on guard actually confirm the reliability that Jesus rose from the dead. In fact, they're the ones who go, the body's gone. It's empty. You know, that's the verdict of history. And yet, uh, who's saying this? It's the Gentiles. These Roman soldiers are the, some of the first to see that. It points out the veracity, the truthfulness. And I say all this because the gospel is the hope for all mankind. The gospel is the hope even in the midst of this coronavirus. And the essence of that gospel is what? Jesus died on the cross for our sins. He was buried, but as I like to say, but not for long. <laughs> he was buried, but not for long. And on the third day, he rose again. And that's what we're going to celebrate this coming Sunday. So I hope that you'll come and, and be part of that and be encouraged. And just know that what we believe is true. And because it's true, there's hope. So let this hope permeate your heart and your life at this time. Let us, let me pray for you and let's uh, just go to the Lord at this time. Let's pray. Father, I thank you and I praise you uh, for this moment just to open your word briefly. Pray that Lord, you continue to strengthen us and encourage us. And Lord, may we process this grief, this grief that's brought on by this COVID-19 and it's manifesting itself in many ways. But Lord, let us process it with the, the idea of that there's hope. Yeah, even though Jesus was buried and it was dim and doom and gloom there for a while, Lord, on that third day, it changed everything. And let this celebration of Easter this Sunday change everything in our hearts, in our nation, in our state, and around the world. So, Father, we love you, and Lord, we praise you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. God's people said, amen. So God bless you, and I hope to see you this coming Sunday. God bless you. Bye-bye.